When growing up, one thing we as kids loved doing was watching TV, getting up early to watch Saturday morning cartoons or late at night to watch whatever was playing. These cartoons gave us dreams, expectations, and most of all, permanent memories. Though, some shows pushed the boundaries causing us to remember the more disturbing side of said cartoon. Today, we will be talking about cartoon episodes that traumatized children. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Before this one actually starts, I want to let you guys know that today, the day that you are watching this, at 5 p.m. PST, we will be doing a live Q&A on my Discord server. So you can join and ask a question. It's going to be heavily moderated by my amazing team of mods. I also want to say that this video is heavily inspired by Blame It On George. His link is down in the description. Make sure to go subscribe to him. I love him. I look up to him as a creator. Hopefully one day I can narrate for his channel because I know he invites a bunch of YouTubers to narrate for his videos. But yeah, go subscribe to him. I love him. Also, this list is in no particular order it's just the ones i wrote down with that being said make sure to grab a snack grab a drink and let's get started with the video pingu's dream pingu pingu was a swiss british stop-motion claymation children's show created by otmar gutman in 1987 the main character is a penguin called pingu who lives in the south pole along with his family and friends the show aired on bbc children's and education and episodes averaged five minutes in length today we will be talking about season one episode 26 Pingu's dream. The episode starts off as normal, nothing out of the ordinary. Pingu's mom is reading him a bedtime story and Pingu begins to drift away to sleep. He wakes up to the sound of his igloo jumping and before you know it, the igloo flies away. Then his bed extends its legs and it begins walking. The camera cuts to this creepy walrus watching Pingu in his bed go about their day. Not to mention that every time the walrus pops up, these synths are played, just, it just gives you some uneasy feeling. What's up with things involving walruses being creepy? Like, what the- The directors keep showing the audience how the walrus is just watching Pingu. Eventually, the walrus makes his introduction. And you know how the directors made this already creepy character make his introduction to children? This is how. <laughs> it's clear to see that the walrus is supposed to have this, like, goofy personality that finds everything funny and just wants to play. But they really messed up by making him almost human-like. The walrus begins messing with Pingu and eats his bed, all while non-stop laughing. Pingu and his bed begin running away, and Pingu ends up falling down a hill of snow. It was actually a pretty cool transition because the next camera zooms out, and you can see that he's in his room again. The episode ends with Pingu crying and his mother consulting him. Yes. That's how this episode ends. Not only is this the ending to the episode, but this was actually the season finale. This episode was highly controversial and was eventually banned from television due to the giant walrus being too scary and unsettling for many young viewers. The creator, Omar Gutman, actually used the same walrus model in a German short film he made years prior. This caught me off guard because the voice he used for the walrus is so unexpected. Here, I'll just play the clip. Yeah, um, let's move on. Let's move on the list. Blue Cat Blues, Tom and Jerry. Tom and Jerry need no introduction. I'm 100% sure everyone watching this video knows exactly who these two are. Blue Cat Blues is about Tom's love for a female cat, which doesn't love him back. The video begins with a quote by Jerry's narrator while watching Tom sit on the train tracks, patiently waiting for the train to come by. The quote is, poor Tom, in a few minutes, it'll all be over. And for the first time since he met her, he'll be happy. Poor, miserable, lovesick creature. I suppose people will say I should have helped him. I know but it's better this way. Talk about a kid's show getting dark. Throughout the episode, we see just how much Tom is in love with this cat and how he is overthrown by another cat by the name of Mr. Butch. The cat with more money, more gifts, a better car. Tom resorts to drinking milk, which in this episode is a substitute for alcohol. Tom is seen sliding down a gutter until Jerry saves him. They get splashed by some water and come to find out it's Mr. Butch and the love of Tom's life riding away in his car with a just married sign. After this, the same thing happens to Jerry as his girlfriend is riding away with another mouse. Jerry Jerry brings himself down to the train tracks, sits next to Tom, and both patiently wait for the train to pass by. The episode ends with the haunting horn of a train. This episode was banned by Cartoon Network and Boomerang due to its references to alcohol and also, I just want to clear up a common misconception, and that is that this is actually the finale to the series. It's not. 
Man's best friend, Ren and Stimpy. Ren and Stimpy ran on Nickelodeon from 1991 to 1996 and focused on a sociopathic chihuahua and a clueless cat. This show got away with so much shit, it's actually scary. Season 2, episode 4 opens up with a man by the name of George Licker adopting Ren and Stimpy at a pet store. Once he takes them home, he puts them through a bunch of rigorous tasks to see if they can keep up with how he wants his ideal pets to act. In one scene, he forces Stimpy to get on his couch so that he can learn how to be quote unquote disciplined and, well, just watch. That's a good boy. I have no idea how Nickelodeon let this show air in the first place. Eventually, George says that his pets need to learn how to attack, so he puts on this padded bite suit and Stimpy is reluctant due to him being his owner. Ren, on the other hand, takes full advantage of this and begins beating the ever-living shit out of George with a paddle. So much so that George's head does a full 360 and right eyeball falls out of its socket. Ren continues on his rampage and just doesn't stop beating this man to a pulp. It even shows George with X's for eyes, and we all know what that means. Though he actually didn't die, it's still quite disturbing to add that little detail. But the disturbing parts of this episode don't end there. George climbs out of his suit, breathes like a maniac, and congratulates Ren on being a true champion. The episode ends with all three characters dancing. Yeah. Now, this episode actually never ended up airing on Nickelodeon. It was banned once they uh, saw what it actually contained. But this episode was moved to Ren and Stimpy Adult Party Cartoon. And that show was basically a revival of the original, except with very sexual... It was just a very sexual show. I mean, if the creator went from making a kid's show and turning that kid's show into a sexual... I mean, I guess we could see where his mind was. Anyway, we could tell that this creator was trying to go with this dark humor, but it just ended up being super creepy for kids, and it was not the right movie. Teeth for two. Cat Dog. Cat Dog ran for seven years on Nickelodeon from 1998 to 2005. You may recognize Dog's voice since it's Tom Kenny, SpongeBob's voice actor. Teeth for Two is actually a fun concept for an episode where whenever one of them does something, the other one feels it. Except it revolves around teeth. Look, I hate the dentist already. Yes, I do go, but just the fact that there's drills in your mouth, paws, nah, bro. I just hate everything about the dentist so much. Anyway, the dentist tells them that the food they eat affects the other's teeth, resulting in cat's teeth to become brown and withered. Cat Cat tries to convince Dog to start eating healthy, but then turns into a battle seeing who can do more damage to the other's teeth. Cat chews on ice, and Dog chews on foil. Later that night, Dog is asleep and Cat attempts to brush his teeth. He is unable to do so because of all the food in his mouth. So what's the next best option? That's right, traveling inside of their own body to come out as an inside-out cat out of Dog's mouth. Dog screams of horror and swallows Cat back down to where he's supposed to be. Skipping to the end, they get their teeth fixed but end up getting food allergies from all the junk they ate throughout the entire episode. Never thought I'd see an inside out cat trying to brush a dog's teeth. Knuckles and his hilarious problem. The Misadventures of Flapjack. The Misadventures of Flapjack was another show that got away with so much disturbing shit. Personally, as a kid, I loved it just because it was so gross and I thought that was so funny back in the day. I remember pausing it at those funny still frames of like really detailed zoomed in pictures of the characters' faces. Anyway, season two, episode four is Knuckles and his hilarious problem. This episode is about addiction. More specifically, Knuckles' addiction to candy, which has the effects of alcohol, from feeling warm and happy, angry at the world, to depression. The next morning after Knuckles ingests a bunch of candy, Flapjack realizes that Knuckles has become addicted to the candy, so much so that he hallucinates, sees Flapjack as a lollipop, and tries eating him. Next, Knuckles begins manipulating Flapjack and tells him that he's just fine and he can trust him. Though this only leads to two candy rampages where he steals from homes, babies, and a gumball machine. Then we go to this depressing scene showing just how this candy addiction has left Knuckles, getting kicked out of the candy trough, being used as a doormat, and taking any bit of candy he can get, even if it's from a stranger's mouth. Bubby decides to send Knuckles off to isolation on a piece of the boardwalk into the sea. Here, Knuckles begins hallucinating and imagines a giant flapjack putting his arms inside of his mouth and vomiting candy into it. Very dark episode if you think about it, especially seeing just how bad the effects of candy have left Knuckles. I really like the episode though, it really makes you aware of just how bad alcohol or any addiction can be. 
Earth Mover, Batman Beyond. Batman Beyond released in 1999 and aired on Cartoon Network and WB Kids. Today we're going to be talking about Season 1, Episode 15, aka Earth Mover. We start with this teenage girl by the name of Jackie hanging with her friends, one of which is Terry McGinnis, aka the Batman after the original Bruce Wayne Batman. She explains that she's been feeling like she was followed and washed by someone. Soon after that, Terry sees a mysterious figure outside through the window. A chase begins, but the figure isn't caught. The next day, Jackie's adopted father gives all three of them a ride, but first he says he wants to show them something. That being a piece of land he plans on buying and placing a factory on. An earthquake happens and again, there is another fight scene. After this, Bill, her adopted father, explains that he thinks it might be Jackie's real father looking for him. He tells the story from many years ago and while he was trying to dump toxic waste into an abandoned mine shaft, the wire pulling up the container got stuck on a piece of wood and resulted in the entire mine shaft collapsing in on itself. Jackie's father was at the bottom and ended up being crushed by the debris. Not only that, but was covered by the toxic waste. Everyone assumed that he died instantly, and Bill felt so bad that he ended up adopting Jackie, who was only a kid at the time. Fast forward into the episode, and the Earth Mover has trapped both Jackie and Bill underground. During this scene, Jackie finds out what her father actually looks like, and, well... So like the text was saying, I can't show too much due to a copyright claim, but basically Jackie is horrified seeing that this is her father. I mean, who wouldn't be? Look at the way they drew it. Yeah, that's basically the scene in a nutshell. I mean, even listen to that voice. It sounds like he's struggling to get his words out. He seems to think that Bill betrayed him and left him to die so that he didn't have to split the revenue with a partner. He also sees Bill adopting Jackie as her getting stolen from him. Imagine accidentally dying and then the friend that accidentally killed you adopts your daughter. Bro. Eventually, Batman swoops in and saves the day. The episode ends with this very dark quote. My father. He's not your father. Not really. He's a ghost. Dad. Mooch Master P, Mr. Meaty. Mr. Meaty aired from 2006 to 2009 and was canceled due to a mix of low ratings and criticism from adults and vegetarians who protested against the show. Honestly, the show was very lucky it even lasted three years considering how ugly all of the characters were. The show followed fast food workers Josh and Parker through their odd adventures. Season 1, Episode 6 begins with Parker and quote unquote mooching off of everyone and eating their food. Josh gets annoyed and tricks him into eating a raw patty. Then, weird things start happening. Like all of the food Parker is about to take a bite out of disappear. Josh records it with a camcorder and slows down the footage. Then we see that a giant tapeworm is living inside of Parker eating all of his food. They decide to get rid of the tapeworm the only way they know how, fishing it out of Parker's stomach. They do end up getting it out and an Australian man comes by and says he'll buy it for his zoo. Though he doesn't take it to the zoo. Instead he uh, he swallows it whole in front of them. Here we go. Come on in. and says she tickles on the way down. Wow, okay. King Ramsey's Curse slash Remembrance of Courage Past, Courage the Cowardly Dog. This list would not be complete without mentioning Courage the Cowardly Dog. I could go on and on about all the creepy monsters that gave kids nightmares throughout the entirety of the series, but I want to mention the one that stuck with me the most, and that's King Ramsey's Curse. In this episode, Eustace does not want to return a historical slab because he hears on the news that it's worth $1 million. A person from the museum it belongs to comes over to take it back and offers Eustace a tote bag. Really, my guy? I'm pretty sure you could legally get it back <laughs> for free. Then the door gets slammed on him. When it becomes nighttime, they hear a creak at the door and check outside. Then we get King Ramses, who just keeps repeating, return the slab or suffer my curse. Return the slab. What? Return the slab or suffer my curse. It's just such a creepy design and also it's a 3D model in a 2D animated show. There's so many instances of just plain creepy stuff in this cartoon, but that's what gave it its charm. I feel like Courage the Cowardly Dog definitely let young kids know whether they like the horror genre. So, shout out to Courage the Cowardly Dog for that. I also want to talk about another episode called Remembrance of Courage Past, which is actually the second to last episode of the entire series. This episode is about Courage's parents, which sadly got taken away from him at an early age due to an evil veterinarian. This veterinarian puts Courage's parents in a rocket ship, and Courage can't do anything because he's just a pup. While being chased, Courage hops into the garbage disposal and escapes. He watches as his parents are sent off to space and waves goodbye. 
We see how Courage is adopted by Muriel and why she decides to name him Courage. Meanwhile, in the present day, the same thing is about to happen to Muriel and Eustace, but luckily, Courage is able to save the day and send the veterinarian to space this time. In space, he finds himself with all the other dogs he has experimented on, including Courage's parents. <laughs> Those two episodes never left my mind. I, yeah, I think about those episodes to this day. Jurassic Bark, Futurama. This is a little bonus I'm throwing in. The reason I'm throwing this in as a bonus is because one, Futurama wasn't really made for kids. It was a show for young adults. And two, I don't think this episode traumatized anyone. It was just incredibly sad. And if you're a fan of Futurama, you already know what I'm talking about. This episode, Jurassic Bark, was the hardest one to rewatch for me. This episode is about Fry's old dog from 1997 named Seymour. In case you guys don't know, Futurama takes place in the year 3000 with Fry being the only person from the year 2000. Since he accidentally fell into a cryogenic chamber, on New Year's Day. Anyway, Fry finds Seymour as a fossil in a museum where he then takes home to the professor. The professor explains that he can actually bring back Seymour with new technology, and so Fry begins getting ready for Seymour's return. This includes a doggy bed, a collar, and some chew toys. When the professor is ready to bring back Seymour, Bender throws his body into a pit of lava because he's jealous that Fry will have a new best friend. We get a flashback of Seymour doing everything in his power to find Fry. Seymour eventually finds Fry, but no one in the lab notices that Fry is in there, even his parents who go to pick up Seymour talk about frustration. Anyway, Bender jumps into the lava pit and retrieves Seymour's body. Seymour didn't burn due to the material covering his body. The professor finds out that Seymour actually lived his full lifespan of 15 years, 12 years after Fry's disappearance. So Fry decides not to bring him back simply because he doubts Seymour even remembers him, and he probably moved on with another family. But wait, here's the kicker. We, the audience, get a flash. episode was actually nominated for an Emmy in 2003, which, you know, that's just how good the episode was. Sadly, it did not win the Emmy. Uh, the Simpsons beat it out, which is also made by Matt Groening. So, Matt Groening, good on you. <laughs> yeah, this episode tore my heart out when I watched it. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and make sure to subscribe to the channel. We're almost at 200,000 subscribers. Make sure to go follow me on all my socials, Instagram, Twitter. Go subscribe to my second channel. Join the Discord server because we're going to be talking later today. And even if you're watching this video on the day that I didn't upload it, it's okay. I Sometimes I join the voice channels and I just talk to you guys when I'm bored. You'll get guaranteed sneak peeks on my channel membership. So if you want to join that for $1 or $1.99, be my guest. We also got merch. I'm just going to promote that since I'm saying everything. <laughs> my next video will be TikTok Iceberg Part 3 with a special co-host. Part 3 is the finale, so we're gonna end off the series with number 3. And you guys are gonna love her, so make sure to stay tuned, turn on post notifications, and I will see you guys next time I upload. Rich boy, rich boy, baby just want a rich boy, rich boy, rich boy, baby just want a pocket full of cash.